My name again is Reverend Gregory Holston, the Executive Director of POWER. POWER is 83 congregations working with another 40 congregations across the city of Philadelphia and the surrounding counties and now in the center of Pennsylvania, building communities of opportunity to work for all. We are Muslim, Jewish, Christian, and humanists. We are black, Latino, uh, and white. We are urban, rural, and suburban. We are power, and we are believing in that power for change in our state and in our country. I am proud to be a part of this organization that has won victories in this city, 4,000 airport workers, some making as little as $2.50 an hour, who are now making $15 and have a union and have benefits and have a different and a better life because of our work together with unions like SEIU and Unite Here. I'm proud to say also that as a part of an education coalition, we, we raised a $600 million more million for education across the state of uh, Pennsylvania and also passed a fair funding formula for our schools. I'm excited also because there is the truth about Philadelphia, it is ground zero for real criminal justice reform, and I'm proud to stand with those who are fighting that fight together, like Reclaim Philadelphia, Media Mobilizing, a 215 PA Alliance, who are believing together that we can create change like any other change in this nation. When we stand together, we can change our systems and we can end mass incarceration where we can do it together. We have reduced the prison population in this city from 6,500 a year ago down, down to 4,700, almost a 25% decrease in the prison population in this city because black and white and Latinos stood together to make that change. And so with all these incredible changes and a real Philadelphia movement that is happening in this city, I still am aware that our city is still the poorest big city in the country. It still has a 26% poverty rate, which is about 400,000 people in this city living in poverty. It still has 14% of the people living in deep poverty. That's about 200,000 people making as individuals somewhere around $5,500, $5,600 a year. That's a little more than $100 a week. Not far from here in North Philadelphia, there are zip codes where the poverty rate is 60% and the unemployment rate is 50%. And, and the thing about this is that for the last 50 to 60 years, people who have called themselves progressive have run this city but there has been no change in the lives of those that I've just spoken about in North Philadelphia. The manufacturing plants that were there in the 1960s, those plants that went first to the suburbs and then to the south and then outside of this nation, and now those jobs don't even exist because of technology. There was never any industry that came back to really replace those jobs, and the people there have suffered with the promises of politicians over and over and over again that change would come and change has not come for their lives. And so the question becomes, who are the real progressives? Who are the people that are really going to stand up and really create the kind of progress? Because you can't call yourself a progressive if the situations have still remained over the years because progressive in the root word has progress. And if we're not making any progress, then you can't be a progressive. The truth of the matter is that we can't make progress because we don't attack the real issue. That we, that we really don't go after what the real situation is. That we really don't understand that the, the death of racism and how it affects our nation. 
We try to win this issue or that issue or that issue, and we're frustrated over and over because we're not attacking the underlying racism that is affecting all of the issues that we care about. We cannot win on those issues unless we build a real black and Latino and working class white folk coalition that can stand together and build together and create together the kind of world that we really want. And so we have to deal with this unholy alliance that occurred and is rooted in America. An unholy alliance between the white elite and the white working class that is rooted in the very structure of every business and every industry that we have. That goes as far back of before America was created when, when black and white used to work together and to go against those who were of the elite class. But the elite made a promise. I'll treat you just a little bit better than black folk. I'll treat you just to give you just a little bit more in the structure. I'll just give you just a little more money. I'll keep most of the money for myself, but I'll keep just a little bit more for you and allow you to treat black people in this nation less than human. And well, by doing that, create an alliance, an alliance that defined what white people were. I looked across the world and I recognized that, that, that the phrase white, that there is no white land anywhere. Look on the map. Most people identify themselves by the nation that they come from. They are Italian descent or Irish descent or, 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 or German descent or Spanish descent by the nation they came from. Where is white land? It was made up, it was created to, to be able to connect with the, with the poor white working class, the poor white indentured servants, and a promise was made with that creation of what we call today white people. And that promise was, I will always treat you above the black person. And so throughout all of the systems that we look at throughout our, our, our society, you always see a racial disparity everywhere you go. Whether you're talking education, whether you're talking economic justice, whether you're talking criminal justice reform, whether you're talking climate justice, right there in the midst of all of it is always an underlying racial disparity because from the beginning of this country, there was a promise that black people would be treated less than human and that promise is still being kept. Still being kept still being kept, still being kept. And, the, 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 and so when we stand here at these places, we don't realize that the one fight we really all have, that with all the issues and organizing we do, all of the stuff that we say we care about, until we see all of ourselves really as anti-racism organizers, until we see that the issue that we're fighting on is not really the main issue, but the main issue underlying is the racism that keeps those institutions and keeps the profit coming and keeps those people oppressed. Until we see that racism is at the very core of everything we care about. We cannot win. And that's tough. Because you gotta look, you gotta look at yourself. And you gotta look at the people that you're organizing. And you got to challenge them on the white privilege that they may have. I'll give you an example quickly. We were involved in a great education campaign. I just told you $600 million in a fair funding formula. But when we started to sit down and say, okay, we, we recognize that they're not gonna put all of the money, the basic education money into the formula. And we need to declare that all 100% go into the formula because that's the way we can get a fair share of dollars for black and brown children in Pennsylvania. But it meant going to white districts 
who get more than their fair share and have gotten more than their fair share, not for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, but for the history of the commonwealth, they always got more than their fair share. And so it meant looking at our white colleagues who were organizing and saying, yes, you got to go back and tell them the only way we're all going to win and we're all going to come up higher and we're all going to raise more money together for more education together is if they don't recognize they've been getting more than their fair share and we now got to have equality for everyone. Until you're willing to do that in all of the places, in all the tough conversations, dealing with the white privilege that is there that made it just a little bit better, but to recognize if you give up just what a little bit better, we can all work together to get a whole lot better because I guarantee you the 1% who controls 42% of the wealth of this nation, they have more than enough to give all of us everything we need. And if we can band together and build together and stand together, we can create the kind of world we're looking for. So I need some real progressives. I need some real progressives that will say that you, that will understand that when you talk about economic justice and you talk about the one percent, but but you don't talk about the justice for the ancestors of the 10 million African slaves who gave 300 years of, of worth of economic worth to this nation, and you don't want to talk about reparations, then you're not a real progressive. Don't call yourself a progressive if you understand that mass incarceration over the last 50 years was another kind of slavery if you're not willing to stand up and say not only does every record need to be expunged, but all of the back wages need to come back to the people who have been prosecuted for these years against the justice that we need. We don't call yourself a real progressive if you don't understand that climate justice is not just what's happening to our nation, what's happening to our world, but climate justice has been happening, uh, uh, injustice has been happening to black and brown people from the beginning of time, and that they're poisoning our children, they're poisoning our community, the refineries and the big and the plants that exist are poisoning all of us until you stand up for black and brown children that got asthma and black and brown people that got cancers and black and brown people who are hurting today, you're not really fighting for climate justice. So let me close by saying I'm looking for a movement. I'm looking for a movement for real change. I'm not waiting looking for the fake change anymore that we talk to each other and we rally together in our cocktail parties about what victory we won today when we know that that incremental change is really not changing the lives of anybody. I'm looking for a movement that believes that we can really change and transform our nation and systematically strip down and dismantle racism at its very core. I'm looking for a movement, a movement that believes in a representative democracy, that everyone's vote counts, and if anybody's vote is not being counted, we need to stand up together and fight to every part of voter suppression that continues to tear us apart. I'm looking for a movement, a movement that believes that we should have the right to affordable housing, a right to a, a Medicare for all, a right to, to quality education for all, a movement that believes that we should have full employment for everybody who wants it and believes that we should have a living wage for everybody and even believes that we should have a guaranteed income for every individual in America. We have the wealth. We have the power. We can do it. Why don't we take care of everybody in this country? I'm looking for a movement. 
a movement that believes uh, that we can hope together and dream together and stand together and believe that we can create the world we're looking for, not just a world uh, that is protected against uh, the climate injustices that are happening right now, but a world, uh, uh, the world of a beloved people where we stand together in that beloved world uh, and we love one another and we believe that actually for the equality of each and every individual and affirm the humanity of every individual, no matter what their faith, no matter what their nationality, no matter what their sexual preference, no matter who they are, that we believe that you all have worth, that you all have humanity, and we can stand and build that world together. I'm looking for a movement. I don't know about you, but I believe the movement can start today and start with us if we're willing to stand together. Are you willing to do that today? Are you willing to stand today? Are you willing to dream today? Are you willing to be a real progressive today? Are you believing that you can make the difference? If you do, stand on your feet and say, yes, today I believe in the movement for change. I believe, 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 I believe that we can win.